Now, the thing is, we want to make this process even more robust. Right now, our contracts are hard-coded so that this will only work for Sepolia. Sepolia is the only chain that we can deploy this contract to, and it's the only chain that we can actually test our contracts on. That's incredibly restrictive. And if we were to go to change our minds and deploy to a different chain, we'd have to refactor our entire code base. We'd have to consistently update all the addresses in here, both in FundMe and, of course, in our price converter. And it could take a lot more work to get that done correctly. So what we really want to do is we want to make it such that whenever we deploy our contracts, we deploy them in a way that's modular with addresses or external systems. If we deploy our code without hard-coded addresses like this, we can actually make our deployments more modular, deploy to other chains much easier, and actually test much easier no matter what chain we're working on. So we're actually going to do a little bit of refactoring of our core code base so that it's not just hard-coded to Sepolia. So let's go back to the FundMe. Oh, and we actually want to do, looks like I copied this wrong. This should be fundme underscore underscore not owner like this. But let's come back to the fundme and let's update this so that we're not hard coding the address here. What we can do is we can actually pass a constructor parameter so that whenever we deploy this contract, we deploy it with the address that we want to use. And this address will depend on the network we're actually deploying to. When you go back through your code and you change the way it's architected, but you don't really change a lot of the functionality, that's something called refactoring your code. Refactoring is something that's really good for engineers because it helps keep your code maintainable moving forward. So in our constructor, what we can do is we can pass an address price feed as a constructor parameter. And up here where we have our state and storage variables, we can create a new one, aggregator v3 interface, private s underscore price feed. And then what we can do is in our constructor say s price feed, equals aggregator v3 interface price feed. So now down here where we're hard coding the address, we can actually just go ahead and delete this whole thing and do s price feed dot version. Call the version function directly on our price feed variable that we're passing in. And additionally, in our price converter, we can update this function to take in an input parameter for this price feed address. So for get price, we'll just say as an input parameter, it's going to take aggregator v3 interface price feed. We're going to actually just delete this line. And then for get conversion rate, we'll have it also take an aggregator v and v3 interface price feed. And then for this get price here, we'll just pass it the price feed as an input parameter. Now back in fundme.sol, when we call get conversion rate, we will pass in this price feed here. So I know we just did a lot of refactoring, but let's recap. When we deploy this contract now, we're going to take as an input parameter this price feed object. If we were back in Remix and we were to copy paste this into a Remix here, let's go ahead and copy paste both of them, both the price converter and the other one. Let's compile FundMe, looks good. And we were going to go deploy FundMe. We now see in this deploy box, we have this address price feed as an input parameter. That's exactly what we're going to be doing when we deploy our FundMe contract here. We're going to pass it a price feed. And this price feed is going to depend on the chain that we're on. So if we go back to our deploy fundme.sol, we now actually have an error. It's saying, oops, wrong argument given. You need to pass a price feed in here. What we could do is we just stick the price feed in here. And now and it should work. Of course, in fundme.test, we're also going to have to go and stick the price feed in here. And this is where you're seeing there's kind of a lot of work happening every time we update how we deploy this, right? If I update how I deploy in my script, I'm also going to have to update how I deploy in my test. That's too much work. And remember, we're engineers. We want to do as much work as possible to be as lazy as possible. Additionally, if maybe we update something in our deploy script over here and we forget to do it over here, that means we're not going to be testing our deploy environment. So how do we set this up so that anytime I change the way I deploy my contract, I don't have to also change the way I do my setup function. Well, what we can do instead of deploying our FundMe contract ourselves in here, we can just call out to our deploy function over here. So let's update this, this a little bit. Let's instead in our FundMe test, let's just import our deploy FundMe contract from that slash script 
backslash deploy fund me dot s dot soul. And let's just use our deploy fund me so that we always deploy in our test setup the exact same way we deploy in our script. So let's update our run function to instead return a fund me contract. And now we'll say fund me fund me equals new fund me. And we'll say return fund me. I know there's a lot of uppers and lower cases in here. Make sure we have it right. Returns. And what we can do is in here, instead of doing this line, we could say, we'll first create a new deploy fund me contract. Deploy fund me equals new deploy fund me. Because remember, deploy fund me is a solidity contract. And then we'll say fund me equals deploy fund me dot run. Because run is now going to return a fund me contract. So now that we have this set up, all we have to do is update how we deploy in here and our tests will deploy it the exact same way every single time. This is us being much more intelligent with the way we approach the architecture of our code base. Awesome. And once again, I love saying this, but by you learning this, you're already better than half the Solidity developers out there. So great job, excited that you learned this. And just to make sure everything's working, let's go ahead and run forge, test, dash dash fork URL, Depolia RPC URL. Let's make sure everything's working correctly here. And it looks like we broke something in our refactoring. So this is good. We broke test owner is meshed sender. Ah, well, the reason that failed is because now our deploy fund me contract over here is actually doing the deploying. And when you do this vm.start broadcast, this makes the funder actually message us sender again. It's a little bit confusing. This is one where you don't have to worry too much about it right now. But just know that instead of doing address this now, we can actually go back to message.sender. And now if we run our test again, great, we can see everything passes. Fantastic.